With this video I will be covering what controls are most important to operation and a quick overview of important sections of the cockpit to help you get started with the Hornet. Before we set foot in the cockpit we'll need to configure our controls. Starting with the HOTAS, the control stick. At the top, the sensor control switch. This has many functions depending on your master mode. It'll change your sensor of interest, shown by a small diamond in the corner of your displays or a dot within the velocity marker on the HUD. In BVR, it'll center the TDC, assign the DDI that you wish to use, and enable the ACM modes. In ACM, it'll cycle between the automatic radar acquisition modes such as boresight and vertical scan. The weapon's release button, this as you might imagine is to drop bombs and fire rockets. The trigger, this allows you to fire guns, the AIM-7 Sparrows, M9 Sidewinders or AIM-120 AMRAMs. The weapon select switch, this will allow you to cycle between all your air-to-air -air weapons. Note that in the controls it is referred to as select weapon name rather than weapon select switch. Undesignate slash nose wheel steering. This will undesignate your current target as set by the TDC or radar, but will also allow you to cycle the nose wheel steering modes when you are on the ground. This will cycle between high and low turn rates. So now on to the less important buttons that you can afford to skip if you're tight for controls. The trim hat, it's probably the most useful remaining control. With this you can balance your aircraft out for asymmetrical loads and trim it for level flight at your current airspeed. You can probably get away with using the keyboard binds, for, however. The paddle switch, or the disengage switch. When pulled on the ground, this disengages the nose while steering. In the air, it will disengage the autopilot, and when the autopilot is already disengaged, it will allow you to override the G-limiter that is part of the flight control system. This will allow you to turn tighter at the expense of airframe stress and airspeed. Finally, the recce event mark switch. I believe this switch is used to store events for debriefing, and may also be involved in the use of mark points, however I do not currently believe it has any function. Next, the throttle. The dispense switch will start your selected countermeasure program, or when the countermeasures are set to bypass, it will drop a pair of flares or a chaff bundle as you push it forward or aft. The speed brake. As you might expect, this will extend or retract your speed brake. It's worth noting that in the Hornet the speed brake can be left at any position, it's not a full on or full off air brake, it can be in anywhere in between. The throttle designator controller. This is what you use to slew your sensors such as the radar, HUD designation and the targeting pod. It also has a push function much like a gamepad, the equivalent to L3 or R3. This is used to lock targets. The antenna elevation control is similar to that of a scroll wheel allowing you to aim your radar scan volume up or down. RAID slash FLIR FOV This will cycle the field of view on your selected sensor such as the app FLIR when it is implemented. The uncage button allows you to cage and uncage the HUD. This centers a velocity vector and the pitch ladder, useful for turning and landing in crosswinds. A ghost velocity vector is also shown in place of the original uncaged velocity vector when in this mode. For weapons, it will uncage the seeker head of your selected weapon. This applies to weapons such as the AIM-9 Sidewinder and IR slash camera censored weapons, like Mavericks. Uncaging allows the seeker head to leave boresight and start tracking targets. The less important controls on the throttle include the ATC button, the automatic throttle control. This will hold your current airspeed, or if your wheels are down, it will attempt to hold your on-speed angle of attack. On the far left side of the throttle we have the exterior lights. This is a master control for your lights, allowing you to quickly switch them all off or on. Com switch. Unless you're using realistic radio or simple radio, you won't need these. It allows you to send messages on COM1, COM2, in addition to MIDs A and B. The finger lifts are to pass the travel limits on the throttle and you will not need to bind these. So now we're in the controls. The first step is to assign your axes. If you have multiple throttle units, joysticks or rudder pedals or separated, you will have to bind these more than likely manually. If you have them all as one single unit, they're probably bound correctly already. If you wish to clear a category quickly, select the category, press clear category and this will clear all the binds for this specific controller. To bind controls, double click, put the inputs in, 
You'll need to use the full range of your axes to bind them, or select it from the drop down list. You'll need to bind your rudder, thrust left and right if you have a split throttle, wheel brakes, wheel brake left and right if you have dual pedals. You will probably want to bind the view, view zoom if you have a radial or a slider available to you. And you'll want obviously the pitch and the roll. There are lots of additional controls in here available to you, including lighting and volume controls if you happen to have a button panel or extra axes going spare. Returning to the main controls, I'll quickly go over the controls we just discussed on the HOTAS. If you have a large number of controllers, you may have to scroll to find your controller. As you can see here we've got a keyboard, rudder pedals, X55, a USB controller, and an F16MFD. If I scroll across, we can now find my Warthog, throttle and joystick. In order to bind controls, simply double click a square and input the button you wish to use. Remember you need to ensure that you've selected the category for the throttle or the joystick or whatever controller you are currently using. If you press buttons on the other one, they will be ignored. The sensor control switch, I highly recommend you bind this to a hat switch on the top of your joystick. The trim hat, very useful to have if you can afford to bind it. Trigger, obviously bind it to your trigger. Open release button, top of your joystick there's usually a pickle button or something equivalent. The countermeasure switch, I've personally got this bound to my thumb switch, and the same as you would have it on an A10. You have dispense switch aft and dispense switch forward. Pushing it aft will release a pair of flares, pushing it forward will dispense a pair of chaff when you have bypass mode enabled on the, C on the CMS. The undesignate nose wheel steering button, I have this bound to my pinky. The autopilot nose wheel steering disengage panel switch. As you might expect, I've banned this to the paddle on my joystick. I also have on my joystick the uncage button and the throttle designator control depress on my second hat. On my throttle, I've got the ATC engage disengage switch, the master lights, the throttle designator controller up, down, left, right, and depress, and I've got my weapon select switch. Now it's worth noting that the weapon select switch is referred to in the controls as select weapon name rather than weapon select switch position. My air brake, extend and retract. There are a number of different options for this, including a retract slash off, retract, off and extend. I've also got the radar elevation control and the radar flare fob select button. In addition to the joystick controls, you may wish to bind extra, extra functions, including the probe for the fuel and the hook, as well as the flaps. It is worth noting that some controls have extra functions. For example, here we have the flap switch and it has a lot of options. We have auto, auto half, cycle, down, full, full half, half, and up. In my configuration, I use the auto slash half for the up position of my flaps. When I release the switch, it will automatically return to half flaps for me without the need to press the half flaps position. If I then cycle it down, It'll go to full slash half. When I release this switch, it will automatically turn off full flaps and return to half flaps. This is very useful for people with three position switches with only two active positions. The same is available for the fuel probe. For example here, I've got extend slash retract. When the button is held down, the probe is extended. When it is released, the probe will retract. So let's get into the aircraft quickly. Instant action. In the instant action menu, we've got a good range of missions to practice with. So we'll start with the cold and dark. So now we're in the cockpit, let's go over some of the basic features. You press right shift P, you can toggle the pilot on and off with right shift P. You can toggle the joystick on and off with backspace. This will allow you to see the display better as well as access the ECM and countermeasures panel behind it. I will not be going over the startup in this video, however, if you would like to see a detailed startup video, I'll be providing a link to that in the description below. But for the purposes of this video, however, and the quick start guide, I'll be using the auto start. Auto start can be achieved by pressing left windows, home. As you can see, it'll start running through the startup sequence automatically. If you wish to shut down the aircraft, you use left windows, end. This will automatically shut down the aircraft for you. 
So now the aircraft is started, let's go over the cockpit quickly. We have our, our radar operation, our INS, our targeting pod controls, and we have our internal lighting panel. We have our environmental control on pitot heat. Battery panel generators. And this little gauge here, which you've probably heard quite a few times if you've been watching any YouTubers play this. I'll give you an example. This is your radar altimeter. Whenever this needle passes below this marker here, you will hear this tone. If you wish to disable the, the alarm, you can scroll it across into the empty section here. Otherwise, set it to an altitude at which you would like a warning, in hundreds of feet. On the right panel we have our hook, down for down, up for up. We also have our wing fold. Now this has a special function, if you scroll wheel on it, you can pull the switch out, and in. You want to pull it out, you can set to fold. When you are done, ensure that you return it to the pushed position. This is also true of the parking brake slash emergency brake, which can be pulled and pushed, as well as rotated. In the bottom right we have our backup instruments, including our climb rate, altitude, airspeed and attitude. We also have a small RWR here. Note this is not the intended primary RWR. On your DDIs you can in fact find an enlarged one. On the dashboard we have our three displays, including a color display for the moving map in the center. The menu button will always be the center bottom button. If you press it we have now two home menus. We have the tactical and the support page. Under support page we have information such as our fuel, our checklist, including the aircraft total weight, the engine parameters, the flight control system, and eventually we will also have access to the FPAS page. This includes information about our optimum cruise and fuel usage. To the left we also have our HSI. This is essentially the same as the moving map, just without the map information. On the tactical page, which is accessed by simply pressing the menu button again, we have information such as our stores page, and our attack radar. We also have our RWR and the electronic warfare page. On the HUD we have our heading tape, our velocity vector, our altitude, airspeed, angle of attack and our pitch ladder in 5 degree increments, as well as our bank angle here. On the bottom left we have our engine and fuel panel. You can set your bingo value by pressing the up and down buttons. You can see our engine information, and we have our selective jettison station selection. We see our center, left inner, right inner, left outer, and right outer. If you wish to use these, simply select the stations you want, go down to the selective jettison, switch off of safe, to rack, this will drop the stores and the rack that hold them, or you can go down to stores, and this will drop simply the stores and not the rack. You can also drop the right fuse large and left fuse large missile. You'll need to press this button once for each station you have selected. I have two stations, so I'll need to press the button twice. On the top left we have our master mode selector for air to ground and air to air, and our master arm. We also have our emergency jettison button to drop all our stores. On the left panel we have our landing gear, launch bar, extend and retract. You will need to use this prior to catapult connection. Our flap switch, our anti-skid, landing lights and our hook, field or carrier bypass. When set to carrier, the AOA, the AOA indexer will flash if your hook is not down at the same time as your gear. To the left of your throttle you have your exterior lights. Now this is quite hard to see on the ground. If I move my throttle forward you can see our formation lights position lights, and strobe light. Beneath that we have our fuel, we have the manual fuel probe extend switch, fuel tank switch for override to force the tank to drain, normal for normal operation, and stop to stop you from draining from that particular tank. We have wing tank and center tank. We also have fuel dump, this will dump fuel to help you get down to your maximum landing weight. Behind that we have our volume panel, this includes the TACAN and the radios, including the RWR warning sounds. Behind the joystick we have our countermeasures and ECM controls. Setting this to standby will warm up the ECM bit test to test it. Receive this will set the ECM to passively listen and record what it hears. At ECM XMIT. This will cause the ECM to automatically transmit against threats. 
the ECM jettison, this will jettison your flares and chaff. The dispenser bypass, setting this to on, will enable the pre-programmed ECM programs as per the EW page. However, for ease of use, I recommend using the bypass position. This will enable your countermeasure switch to release single chaff or flare pairs. This is the quickest and easiest way to use the system. So with all that, I hope you can understand some of the basics of control for the cockpit and the aircraft. In my next part, I will go over the takeoff, landing and weapons.